Hello. Blind Pew here. You join me for the third part of my transmission where I am attempting to land on all the landable planets and moons in the solar system. We have reached Saturn and its many moons. If you have missed the previous transmissions please click on this link appearing now. Our first target is the moon of Enceladus. Orbital flight engaged. Enceladus is the sixth largest moon of Saturn. It is only 500 kilometers in diameter, about a tenth of that of Saturn's largest moon, Titan. Enceladus is mostly covered by fresh, clean ice, reflecting almost all the sunlight that strikes it, making its surface temperature at noon reach only minus 198 degrees C. Despite its small size, Enceladus has a wide range of surface features, ranging from old, heavily cratered regions to young, tectonically deformed terrains that formed as recently as 100 million years ago. Cryovolcanoes near the South Pole shoot geyser-like jets of water vapor, other volatiles, and solid material, including sodium chloride crystals and ice particles, into space. Totaling approximately 200 kilograms per second. Over 100 geysers have been identified. Some of the water vapor falls back as snow, the rest escapes, and supplies most of the material making up Saturn's Z-ring. Deploying SRV. Let's get out there and take a look. Well, look at this. Fresh snow. Very nice indeed. Nice view of Saturn itself on the horizon there. This is great. Just like being on a toboggan. I have to say, this moon is extremely beautiful, and I believe does have some unusual and interesting features. It is definitely a place I will return to. Unfortunately we can't stay long as Saturn has so many moons and we are visiting them all. So it's back into the ship. And lift off. Wow, that surface really is bright it really reflects all light doesn't it? Next stop, the moon of Tethys. Tethys is a mid-sized moon of Saturn about 1060 kilometers across named after an archaic titan and aquatic sea goddess from Greek mythology. Tethys has a low density, the lowest of all the major moons in the solar system, indicating that it is made of water ice with just a small fraction of rock. The surface is very bright, being the second brightest of the moons of Saturn after Enceladus. Tethys is heavily cratered and cut by a number of large faults. The largest impact crater, Odysseus, is about 400 kilometers in diameter, whereas the largest fault, Ithaca Chasma, is about 100 kilometer wide and more than 2000 kilometers long. These two largest surface features may be related. A small part of the surface is covered by smooth planes that may be cryovolcanic in origin. Like all other regular moons of Saturn, Teth is formed from the disk of gas and dust that surrounded Saturn soon after its formation. Okay. Let's land. Phew. It seems very dusty. A lot of loose surface debris. And into the SRV. Wow. It's quite easy to boost off the surface, catching a fair amount of space there. And... A really great view of Saturn and Barnard's loop in the distance there. Hum. I'm not finding a lot of note here. Right. I've been traveling around for some time in the SRV. I've recalled the ship as I've lost the landing site. Ah, there it is. My asp is just landing on Tethys now. I must say that I have still not found much of note. 
It may be that I landed in an unfortunate location, or that this moon is simply less interesting than Enceladus. Well, it does remain very easy to catch some space here. Probably a function of the low density here. I may be able to fly to the ship at this rate. But can I land? No. Not with any style anyway. Okay. Let's head into the ship then. Up we go. And lift off again. We have a punishing schedule of Saturn's many moons to visit. Next stop Dio. Dion is named after another titan of Greek mythology. Dion is the 15th largest moon in the solar system, but more massive than all known moons smaller than itself combined. Hey, hang on, what is this? Distress call. I'll drop in and see if I can help. Oh. This guy seems to have lost his cargo. Can I help? I've got a bad feeling about his. I, I seem to bear taking a lot of enemy fire. And that very much looked like a plasma accelerator. I think I'll head off. Doesn't seem that my help is needed after all. Or rather, my help would not amount to much here. That frame shift drive engaged just in the nick of time. Where were we? Ah, the moon of Dio. Dion is currently in a 1 to 2 mean motion orbital resonance with moon Enceladus, completing one orbit of Saturn for every two orbits completed by Enceladus. This resonance maintains Enceladus's orbital eccentricity, providing a source of heat for Enceladus's extensive geological activity, which shows up most dramatically in the cryovolcanic geyser like jets I mentioned earlier. It has dissimilar leading and trailing hemispheres. Its leading hemisphere is heavily cratered and is uniformly bright. Its trailing hemisphere, however, contains an unusual and distinctive network of bright ice cliffs. Which is what we are seeing here I think. Aha. My scanner is telling me that there is something of interest errand here. Um. It's not particularly clear but it may be at the bottom of this crevice. I was going to land here anyway so we may as well take a look. Got to be careful I really don't know what we will find down here. It seems pretty deep. Yes, quite deep. Deep enough that there are mountains at the bottom it seems. Uh oh. Almost forgot the landing gear. Better get that out. Gear deployed. Surface seems a bit uneven. Here should do. And touchdown. I'm not immediately seeing anything of note. Okay. In the SRV now. Let's take a look around this crevice. This is quite difficult. The bottom of the crevice is full of mountains and holes that make searching very tricky. Perhaps easier to check from above, as I am doing here. Very difficult to control. Well, I'm still not seeing anything particularly unusual. My asp is looking a bit fat from that angle. This larger rock looks unusual. 
but can I get up the slope to take a closer look? It looks like. Yes. Yes it does. It looks like. A large rock. Not anything unusual. Bit disappointing. Still interesting to see the ice cliffs of Dion. Let's get back in the ship. Up we go. And lift off. Just enough time for a quick look around in the ship. Nothing. More nothing. Still nothing. I'm getting a bit close to the cliff here. I'd best be careful. It's quite fun flying through these trenches. I would recommend it. However with the light fog visibility is not perfect. And that was a bit close there. Okay, out of the crevice now and the scanners are picking something else up. Perhaps on top of the cliffs. Unfortunately, I don't really have time for a new search. Engage. Time to head off. Oh Dion. What secrets do you hold? I will return. Next stop the moon of Rhea. Rhea is named after the Titan Rhea of Greek mythology, the mother of the gods. The second largest moon of Saturn and the ninth largest moon in the solar system. It is the second smallest body in the solar system, after the asteroid and dwarf planet Ceres. Rhea is an icy body with low density indicating that it is made of around 25% rock and 75% water ice. Rhea could be capable of sustaining an internal liquid water ocean through heating by radioactive decay. Rhea's features resemble those of Dio, with dissimilar leading and trailing hemispheres, suggesting similar composition and histories. Rhea has a rather typical heavily cratered surface, with the exceptions of a few large Dion type chasmata or fractures on the trailing hemisphere. Rhea has two very large impact basins on its anti-Cronian hemisphere, which are about 400 and 500 kilometers across. We appear to be landing on the heavily cratered hemisphere. In fact, in one of the large impact craters. There we go. And into the SRV. The inside of this massive impact crater is rather smooth allowing us to get up some speed. Fantastic. Super. Okay, I've been exploring here for some time now and have forgotten where I landed. Recalling ship. Aha, here comes my asp. Boosting. Right over the ship. Can I 360? Yes, just... SRV has taken a bit of a beating though. Time to return to the ship. And back up. Landing gear retracted. Off we go. Next stop by Apertus.
named after a titan of Greek mythology, Iapetus is the third largest natural satellite of Saturn, 11th largest in the solar system, and the largest body in the solar system known not to be in hydrostatic equilibrium. Iapetus is best known for its dramatic to tone coloration. The orbit of Iapetus is somewhat unusual. Although it is Saturn's third largest moon, it orbits much farther from Saturn than the next closest major moon, Titan. It has also the most inclined orbital plane of the regular satellites, only the irregular outer satellites like Phoebe have more inclined orbits. The cause of this is unknown. Unlike most of the large moons, its overall shape is neither spherical nor ellipsoid, but has a bulging waistline and squashed poles. Also, its unique equatorial ridge is so high that it visibly distorts Iapetus's shape even when viewed from a distance. We will land in this massive impact crater and make our way to the top of that central pinnacle in the SRV. And down we go. This moon certainly has a different feel to it. I've landed a bit further from the pinnacle than I thought. We had better get some speed up. Need to be careful the ground is not exactly smooth. Boosting above the surface when I can helps. Nearly there. Okay, we are quite a way up the pinnacle now, making our way to the top. Must be careful not to fall off now, quite a view from up here. Let's call the ship and see how close it can get to us. Boosting. Can I get over the ship? Oh, no how embarrassing. Let's head aboard. I must admit that this moon has a rather unsettling feel to it. Perhaps it is the coloration. Up we go. And off we go. As the ship gains altitude you can really take on board the massive scythe of the crater we are in. Huge. Next stop Titan. Titan is the largest moon of Saturn. It is the only natural satellite known to have a dense atmosphere, and the only object other than Earth where clear evidence of stable bodies of surface liquid has been found. Frequently described as a planet-like moon, it is the second largest moon in the solar system, after Jupiter's moon Ganymede, and is larger by volume than the smallest planet, Mercury. Titan is the only known moon with a significant atmosphere, and its atmosphere is the only nitrogen-rich dense atmosphere in the solar system aside from Earth's. And therein lies the problem. It has an atmosphere so we are unable to land on it with currently available ship equipment. So, for now, we will have to make do with its orbiting space station. Titan City. We've reached the end of this transmission as I prepare to relax here in Titan City. Join me for my next transmission where we will visit and land on all possible outer planets and moons. Uranus and its moons of Titania, Oberon, Umbriel and Ariel, Neptune and its moon Triton, and finally the dwarf planet Pluto and its moon Charon. And, perhaps more. Good luck commanders. And I'll see you out there. I've 
left the crevice now as I have picked up a settlement on my scanner. Let's go and take a look. It looks quite small. Yep. Quite small just a few buildings. Probably some sort of scientific survey. Let's land and take a closer look. <laughs> 